Hi everybody. Have you ever gone to a doctor's office and the doctor runs some tests like um, blood test, tool test, or colonoscopy, endoscopy, and you will prescribe uh, baby PPIs, antiacids, or um, antidepressants, and you were told there is nothing to worry about and to take your medications like a good girl. Have you ever had this experience? There are five secrets about doctors that never tells you. Secret number one. Sometimes the doctors overlook the bigger picture and they don't go deeper into your health issue. They prescribe tests. For example, there was one man who went, um, came for a chest pain and cough and the doctor ordered an x-ray for the chest. And uh, the radiologist saw some shadow in the x-ray and the liver down but and uh, requested for MRI. But when the patient came back to the doctor, the doctor just looked at the chest, they were clear, they said nothing to worry about, and he went home. But after one year, he developed a colon cancer. This is from the archives of the Internal Medical College in New York. So what you can do, you can uh, ask to see your results, even if it's blood test or anything. And if you see something suspicious, just ask the doctor, ask to perform more tests and more checkups. So doctors may give you medications to take them for the rest of your life, like maybe PPIs, antiacid, thyroid medications. And uh, he may tell you there is nothing to worry about and to come maybe after three months, six months for a checkup, like a follow-up. So what you can do, you can ask for possible side effects of the medications. This is very important to ask. Number two, even the best doctors can make a mistake in the treatment and prescribing wrong medications. This most of the time happens in the hospital, in the clinic environment. Maybe they give wrong dose. So in 2009, in the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology, is written that medication error are common in the clinic practice. I have uh, experience for my son when he was uh, young. Um, his blood shows anemia. So the doctor always prescribed him uh, iron supplements. So he was taking, uh, usually if somebody has anemia, it will be like um, tired and pale, my son was hyperactive, so it was strange. So after a few treatments of iron and his blood still shows anemia, there was one uh, doctor who wanted to go deeper and uh, check for the genetic testing of thalassemia. It turns out that he has thalassemia beta thread, which is hereditary from his father and maybe his uh, grandfather, which means his blood will show always anemia. It doesn't mean he's anemic. And he doesn't need iron because taking too much iron supplement, it may have toxic side effects. Number three, even the best doctors can make wrong diagnosis. For example, Mary came to the doctor from severe diarrhea and the doctor gave her Cypro and Imodium medications for to treat diarrhea, but she felt worse from this medication. She checked on internet, she found out that her, the magnesium she was taking was causing diarrhea because she was taking magnesium for her anxiety to calm down. So the doctors um, don't ask you, they usually don't have time to ask you, what are you taking, your lifestyle, what are you drinking? And it's common and happens often. Number four, most doctors will not know the latest research in the field and about the best treatment for you. So one man went to the doctor's office for his pain in the ear whenever he flies, he had pain in the ear, especially when the aircraft is landing and departing. And the doctor prescribed him steroids, nasal spray, and it didn't improve. So he changed two or three more doctors. And finally, he found one doctor in France, because he was traveling a lot, like 44 times in a year, that uh, suggests to him small pump to suck the air from the ear and the pain disappeared. So there are new treatments coming up, so no need for steroids and we need always seek for a second opinion. I have also experience with uh, this issue. I remember when I was looking at my son's photo when he was like a baby, he, one of his eyes was going inwards. So I was thinking he has problem with the vision, even though no, nobody in our family has problem with the eyesight. Okay, only in a later age uh, stage when you need like for reading glasses after 50, 60 years of age. I read on the internet, of course, when, uh, when he reaches age four, is the first time that he needs to go to check the eyesight. And we scheduled back home and I scheduled in a few clinics to check his eyesight. We went to the best clinic. It was the old clinic with one old lady, very experienced to check his eyesight. She was asking him, do you see that letter? 
uh, is it turn left or right and uh, it was our uh, alphabet in Macedonian which he didn't know and he knew only English then she looked in the machine from the machine in his directly in his eyes then uh, she put some drops to open the iris and she looked at his eyes directly from the machine and she said that one of his eye, left eye, 90%, he doesn't see anything. And we were really shocked and stressed. And she said, "You will, I will give you glasses, special glasses, and he will have to do exercises every day. Cover one eye, move the finger. We were doing that the whole weekend. And my son was crying, I have a headache. You know, we were telling him, no, you must do wear the glasses. You must do the exercises we were doing every day. And in the, on Monday, I told my husband, look, I have uh, appo already appointment in another clinic. So let's, let's go and check again. And we went to the other clinic. It was a young lady, like in her 30, 35. She asked my son, uh, do you speak Macedonian? Do you speak English? He said English. She uh, sit him on the uh, chair and on the end of the room, which was much, much far. And she was showing him like birds, houses, cars to, to tell what he sees. And uh, later on, some letters in English, of course, and numbers. And some of them I couldn't see because it was too far and they were too small. But he tell them correctly. And at the end of the check, he, she also checked with um, machine directly in his eyes. And she said, your kid sees perfectly fine. There is no need for any glasses. And we were shocked. And we gave her the whole folder of the, of the check, of the previous check with the lady. And she was looking at the results. She said... I don't know for which child is this result, but it's not for this child. And we told her that the, the previous uh, doctor um, opened, uh, with the drops opened his iris. And she said that that has been forbidden in Europe since a few years ago. And it's not uh, good for the eyes because after the opening, we went outside on the sun, which could damage more his eyesight. And the previous doctor didn't tell us. So please always ask for second, third opinion. And don't settle if you are not sure and not happy with the answer. Secret number five, doctors are very stressed out and sometimes burned out, depressed, which can sometimes lead to low professionalism because they work night, sh night shifts, 24 hours, and then they are sometimes really, really tired. From 182 studies in 2018 of 109,622 physicians, in uh, 45 countries between 2001 and 2018, they found that 72% of the physicians had emotional exhaustion and 67% overall burnout. So burnout can lead to depression, which can lead to suicide, especially since physicians has access to medications. So we have to pay attention and have into consideration all these five secrets that I've told you about the doctor. So doctors are really helpful and we need them, but you have to take into consideration everything that I have told today. And the doctors are out there to help us and we have to find a way to navigate and to work together with each other, with the doctor and with our thoughts and beliefs and communication. Who here has a similar experience with the doctors like me?